Today we're going to try to see if we can get some more credentials. Last time we did some cab roasting and we were able to get into uh, what, the DC-01. Today we're going to do something interesting, which is how to find credentials using Responder. So one thing that I've seen everywhere and everybody talks about is when you get on a network and you have network access, the first thing that you should do is maybe fire off Responder. Why should you do that? Because computers communicate with each other all the time. One of the things that they need to do is to resolve names, computer names to IP addresses and vice versa. That is usually taken care of by DNS. But in Windows, when DNS fails, let's say someone gave the incorrect computer name or the fat finger something in the computer name or the name resolution, Windows will send a broadcast to all the computers on the network using these protocols here either link local multicast name resolution, multicast DNS, or in NetBIOS name save. These will actually be used if it's enabled in the environment. And that, is, that message is usually a broadcast. So what does a broadcast do? It goes to every client on the network. This is not the only thing that you should expect to see on the network. Maybe there's more broadcast messages that are being sent, and we want to be able to see that. So the first thing that we do is we go and we start our responder on the interface where things are running. So in this case, I'm going to say, let's just do an IPA and see which part of the network we are on. So we are on 192.168.56.104, and this is the subnet that we want to be on. So here we are on ETH1. So we'll run our responder for ETH1. A few things are going to fail here. For example, port 80 is taken by a service that I'm running somewhere, but this doesn't hurt us as pen testers. We'll just wait here until we see something. Maybe sometimes we see something, some, sometimes we don't. In Game of Active Directory, I found out that there are two bots that are imitating a client who is failing. I think it's an SMB server connection or something. So after a little bit here, we should expect to see credentials or at least in this case, hashes. So, okay, so after a couple minutes here, you notice that we have Rob stuck. So this is an NTLM v2 hash. So we should be able to crack this one. We'll not be able to pass it. I don't think we can pass these ones. So I'll copy that hash and I'll leave responder running. I'll just go to my temp and say nano. Okay, so that's the name of the file where I'm putting my hash file. Control X, Y. I guess I couldn't type responder, but that's fine. So we have Rob stuck here. Let's see if we can wait a little bit to see if we can get another one. So it's skipping Rob. Did we catch a different one? No. Okay, yeah, it was an SMB hash. So it looks like Rob was trying to authenticate to an SMB shell. Maybe a name resolution failed and we ended up with their hash here. So what do we do with this hash? We can try to crack it. We can crack it using Hashcat. And the way that this will work is Hashcat has examples. So if you go to examples here and search for NTLM v2, the option is 5600, as you can see here. And it will show you what it looks like there. So that's how Hashcat is going to use the mod for 5600. We want to force crack the thing. And A0 is saying use dictionary then we need to point to the file where we saved the hash. In this case, we're using roku.txt word list. So we do, okay, so the only thing that I need to change here is the name of the file, which is this one. And let's see if we'll be able to crack it. Okay, so the first time here you see that responder says, I mean, um, hashcat says ex exhausted. This means that we were unable to crack one of the hashes. Okay, so, Hashcat says it's exhausted, so that means it didn't do the job. Let's try to see if we can use John. So, uh, John is another tool that we can use to try to see if we can crack the hash. I like to try both. Just because one fail doesn't mean the other one won't. All right, uh, session completed. All right, so for the same hash, in this case, I went ahead and saved the user Rob Stack's hash in a file called hash.txt. So let's hash.txt will show you. So this is the hash that I have in hash.txt. 
I went ahead and said, hey, John, can you just use this word list against HTML text? And within a second, John cracked it. Let's try uh, hashcat one more time. Maybe I had a typo in my first one. Hash dot text. Okay, so we're saying hashcat in this mode here, which is NTLM v2 uh, and force. A0 is a dictionary attack on A0. Let's use user share rocky dot text. Let's see if hashcat cracks this one. All right, so <laughs> within a second, Hashcat is able to crack Rob Stark's password and his sexy woofy. So let's see if we can actually use XRDP to sign in as this user on our DC. So the password is there. So this is XRDP. Let's see if we can get in. Okay. Um, oh, typo. Stuck, not start. Okay. That was on 10. Let's try on 11. All right, it works on 11. So our main goal now is find out, is Rob part of any interesting groups, including the administrators? So let's quickly CMD. Just run as administrator, see if it asks us for any credentials. No, it did not. So we are an administrator here, net user. Okay, look at that. So we are part of the administrators, uh, domain users, and also the star stack group. So technically we probably have pawned this part of the domain, but in this video, I just wanted to show you that we can and indeed get some NTLM hashes and crack them. So if you like this, please remember to subscribe, share my videos, and also like so that the YouTube algorithm is happy with me. Otherwise, thanks for being here, and I hope to see you in the next video as we continue to pawn the game of Active Directory.